Hello everyone, welcome back. I know this video is due from a very long time. This is the second part of dentine bonding agent. In the last video, what we have seen, it will be just a quick recap. Firstly, we saw about the definition of the dentine bonding agent. Then we also saw about the ADA specification number. Then we saw about the indications, development of adhesives and the milestones in dentine bonding agent. And we have also started with the most important topic that is the generations of dentin bonding agent and we have covered about the first generation and about the second generation in the last video. Now starting with the third generation dentin bonding agent. Now in first and second generation we saw that the adhesion it was with the smear layer and that was the reason which caused failure of those generation and in that the bond strength was very less and hence to overcome this problem third generation it was introduced in the year 1984 by a company called Clearfill New Bond. So it was introduced in early 80s. So this third generation it is a phosphate based material which contains HEMA. HEMA stands for 2-hydroxyethyl metacrylate and it also contains this 10 MDP. This 10 MDP it stands for 10 metaacryloxy decyl dihydrogen phosphate. So this like third generation it is a phosphate base containing HEMA and 10 MDP. Now in the last two generation what we have seen was dentin is not to be etched because it will be harmful to the tooth. So in that what they have done was there was only enamel etching. But now in this third generation, the philosophy of dentin etching was introduced. The philosophy of phosphoric acid dentin etching, it was introduced by Fuzuyama et al. in the year 1979. And the only third bonding agent or the third generation bonding agent who like followed this philosophy was the Cleophil New Bond Company. So the third generation, it mainly focused on two principles. That was the removal of the smear layer without disturbing the smear plugs or the modification of smear layer. But then it was also said that when you're removing the smear layer, you are reducing the availability of the calcium ions also. Now, if you don't have the calcium ions, so how your material is going to chelate and with what it is going to chelate? Because earlier we have seen that the phosphate it goes and it chelates with the calcium ions which is present on your smear layer. But now in third generation we are removing the smear layer. So to overcome this problem, person called Bovin in 1982, he supplemented the calcium ion in the form of 6.8% ferric oxalate to the dentin. But now again there was the problem with this ferric oxalate when you are applying this ferric oxalate to dentin. So what it did was it formed the insoluble precipitate of the calcium oxalate and the ferric phosphate. Like it caused a black staining. So because of that ferric oxalate it was replaced with aluminium oxalate. Now again this precipitate it interfered with the interaction between the adhesive and the dentin. So you are applying the adhesive over here and here is your dentin. But now if you have this layer of oxalate basically the aluminium oxalate because of the application of this uh, particular material interaction between the adhesive and the dentine it was reduced overcome this again this problem going to apply a very strong acid to the enamel surface and you're going to apply a milder conditioner to the dentine components of third generation it has this agent which is a very strong acid then you have the conditioner primer and lastly the adhesive now when you're writing about the third generation you also need to mention about the etchant conditioner primer and adhesive the etchant which was used it was 37 percent phosphoric acid and it is used till now so now also you're using this 37 percent phosphoric acid so what are the functions of etchant like why exactly are you using this etchant so etchant it mainly has four functions. So the first function is it helps in removing the smear layer. The second is it exposes the collagen fibrils. Third is it demineralizes the dentine and it increases the dentine permeability by four to nine times. 
the etching of enamel and dentine it was contraindicated because they believe that smear layer is protecting the pulp by preventing the direct contact of the monomer that means the monomer it is a strong acid so if you are applying a strong acid in direct contact with the pulp it will damage the pulp and because of that only they said that we are going to etch only the enamel with 37% phosphoric acid and we are going to like apply a milder agent that is your conditioner to the dentine which is like a weak organic acid that is the commonly used one is the malic acid so the conditioner which was used at that time in third generation was the malic acid so malic acid it was applied to the dentine and phosphoric acid it was applied to the enamel now the next agent is a primer in your third generation so this primer it contains a bifunctional hydrophilic monomer which is dissolved in the solvents like acetone ethanol or water so the examples for your primer are hema npg or 4 meta etc so these are like the examples for your primer now what are the like functions of primer so what does primer do so it links the hydrophilic dentine to the hydrophobic adhesive resin so this primer it contains this link basically it is like it is going to link your hydrophobic material to the hydrophilic dentine and it also promotes the infiltration of the demineralized dentine it is going to increase the wettability of the dentine surface so these are the functions of primer the next component that we use in the third generation is the adhesive they are nothing but they are the unfilled or partially filled resin examples are hema bis gma udma so the function of adhesive is it forms the resin tag to seal the dentinal tubules so this is about the components that is your etchant you are also going to like mention about the conditioner a milder conditioner that was used that is nothing but a malic acid then you are going to write about the primer the functions of primer examples of primer and the adhesive what are the advantage and disadvantage of third generation now in this the advantage is obviously the bond strength it was increased to 16 to 26 mpa so this is the advantage of your third generation but now the disadvantage is it is a very complex like the procedure is very complex that means you are applying first you are going to apply the hn then you are going to apply the conditioner then primer then adhesive so the procedure is very complex and it is time consuming and it also involved 3 to 4 applications and the examples for third generation is tenior clear fill new bond so this is all about the third generation now moving on towards the fourth generation now again this had various disadvantages so to improvise they introduced the next generation that was the fourth generation now this fourth generation it is considered the gold standard of dentine bonding agent and it was introduced in the year 1990s so this fourth generation it relied on total elimination of the smear layer and plug in this there are two major hallmarks of like dentine bonding agent that is it is the total etch technique and there is this wet bonding which is to be followed by this fourth generation now what do you mean by total etch technique now earlier what what we have seen was you are going to etch only enamel but now in this fourth generation what you are going to do is you are going to etch enamel and dentine both with 37% phosphoric acid and it was again given by fuzuyama in 1979 so it was initially thought that etching dentine with strong acid it result in irritation of pulp but then they carried out various studies and they have seen that the irritation to pulp is only from the bacteria and that by products and not by any etchant or any bonding agent so in fourth generation they have finalized that yes we are going to etch dentine too with the help of the 37% phosphoric acid this generation of dentine bonding agent it is known as etch and rinse adhesive and the technique is known as etch and rinse or total etch technique now in fourth generation there are again three steps that is nothing but the application of etchant then you are going to apply the primer and then you are going to apply the adhesive 
So these are like the three stages or three steps of the fourth generation. But now in this, you're not going to apply that conditioner that is the mild acid to the dentine. In fact, you're going to apply the same HN that you applied to the enamel to the dentine. Also, that is your 37% phosphoric acid. Now, what do you mean by wet bonding? Person called Kanka, he proved that complete drying of the dentine after the completion of etching. So now what you have done is you have applied the etchant and you're going to completely dry it. This, it is not clinically like recommended. Why? Because now your vital dentine, it is inherently wet. So if you're completely drying the tooth after etching, so what will happen is it will cause the dentinal collagen to collapse. So you have this collagen and if you air dry it with a high speed air, so this collagen, it will collapse. And because of this collapse, your monomer that you're going to apply later on, it will not penetrate properly in the dentinal tubules. And because of that, the bond, it will be reduced. In this, it shouldn't be too moist also, or it shouldn't be too dry. Now why? Because too much of moisture, it will like hamper or it will dilute the primer and it will be less effective so the bonding will be less effective so it shouldn't be too moist also so the use of this hn rinse that is your fourth generation adhesive system with or on the moist dentine it was made possible by incorporating so they incorporated acetone or ethanol in the primer or the adhesive so in this now it is very difficult to assess like whether how wet or how dry the dentine surface it should be so after etching you'll see a glistening hydrated surface so this is the preferable surface so now what you have done is you apply the etchant now to remove the etchant you use water so there were this different ways which was introduced like how you can remove excessive water with the help of laboratory like tissue papers or you can use moist or damp cotton pellet or you can use high volume suctions or disposable brush instead of air. So you are not going to directly like use the air from the three syringe on your surface. Instead, you are going to like wipe it off with the most cotton pellet. Like this is the most commonly used technique which we are doing nowadays. Now lastly, in this fourth generation, what we are going to see is the mechanism of action of the etch and rinse adhesive and the steps which are included like how you clinically like do this fourth generation system adhesive application. So the first main thing that you do is you're going to apply the etchant. So this is nothing but the application of acid to dentine. So you're going to apply the etchant to the dentine in like removing the smear layer. So what is the role of etchant? It removes the smear layer. So we have already seen about that and it also demineralizes the dentine. Now the acid, it demineralizes the dentine it opens dentinal tubules and it exposes the collagen fiber and because of this the permeability the dentinal permeability is increased so this is about the etchant the next will be you're going to apply the primer now what is primer going to do so primer it is going to increase the surface tension of dentine which gets decreased after the acid etching step so after you do the acid etching so the surface tension of the dentine it is reduced so you're going to apply the primer and you're going to increase that surface tension and the next one will be your application of adhesive now when you apply this like primer or bonding agent to the etched surface so what will happen is so this agent it will go in this intertubular dentine and it will form the interdiffusion of the resin with the dentine or what we Call, commonly call it as hybrid layer. So what exactly hybrid layer is? So we have seen about this in the earlier part of the video only. Hybrid layer is nothing but it is the layer which is formed when the resin, it flows in the areas of dentine. So now what do you mean by shag carpet appearance? Now when you're going to apply the primer on the dentine, so what it will do is it will accelerate the monomer penetration so the upright collagen fiber which are directed upwards into the monomer it will give the appearance of this frayed edge of your carpet so the ends are frayed so this will be the appearance which is given by your collagen fibers that is known as the shake carpet appearance so now how you clinically apply this 
fourth generation bonding agent so the first step will be you are going to apply the hn that is nothing but your 37% phosphoric acid for 15 seconds on the tooth surface so here this is your tooth surface you are going to apply the hn for 15 seconds and then you are going to rinse it thoroughly so you are going to rinse it thoroughly with water and you are going to dry it off with the above mentioned different ways in which you can dry the like surface instead of over drying it with air second step is your rinsing so the first step was h and application second is rinsing now the third step will be the application of primer for 15 seconds then the fourth step will be application of adhesive and finally there will be light curing of this adhesive so these are the five stages or the five steps of fourth generation dentin bonding agent now what are the advantages and disadvantages of fourth generation so advantages are now in this like the separate application of conditioner it was like eliminated so because of that the steps are reduced when you're comparing it with the third generation then it had the highest bond strength now in this now fourth generation basically was where you are etching both enamel and dentin so because of that the bond strength it was highest then there was proven effectiveness of adhesion and because of that the results they were consistent then it was low technique sensitive now the disadvantages for fourth generation are again it is time consuming because now in this also you are going to apply first you are going to apply the etch and then you are going to apply the primer and then you are going to apply the adhesive so because of that also it is time consuming so in this you have the like disadvantage of risking of over etching the dentin now again in this over dry or over wet dentin surface may result into like less bonding this is again a disadvantage these are like the advantages and disadvantages of fourth generation so in short the bond strength it was the like highest you can say it was round about 20 mpa and it has this three stages or three steps that is like you are going to etch then you are going to apply the primer and then you are going to apply the adhesive which are contained in all different bottles so you have this three different bottles in fourth generation now what are the examples for fourth generation dentin bonding agent so the first example is the adpo scotch bond multi purpose dentin bonding agent so this particular agent it is given by the company called 3m then the other example will be bonded or a pro bond dentin bonding agent so this particular dentin bonding agent it is given by a company called dentsply so this was all about the second part of dentin bonding agent this is like one of the most important long answer question from dental material point of view but also from conservative like paper point of view because even i remember writing the same long answer question in my final year examination so that's the reason i am breaking this down in three parts so that you know exactly what needs to be written for this particular answer and you can score the best marks out of it and on the same side i don't want to make it boring like by making it a very long video so that was all about the second part of it i hope you found this video helpful and if you did then please like comment share and do subscribe to my channel thank you so much